Howdy. We're back. It was longer than 20 minutes. It was an hour. I needed an hour break. I had to take the laundry downstairs. And some other stuff. Let me hang up the laundry in the basement to dry. So what I'm doing now on this one and really on the, the other one is I'm trying to add in highlights or actually lowlights is what I should call them that will really make everything sort of stand out and so that you can understand what's happening. That is the overall plan. Some things like here there need to be a slight gradation. Oh, sorry. Some things just need some kind of clear edge. If some things don't need an edge. Because in real life there's no edge and they'll actually look worse if you put an edge. Yeah, it's a little bit of an illustrator's technique. But I don't care. So, I had an idea. And the idea is, instead of talking about world news, or even Bavaria news, maybe we should talk about science news. Science. She blinded me with science. Lucky man. Science news. Nature briefing from nature.com. Gee, surprisingly enough, the top of the list on science news is how dangerous are Omicron infections? We just can't get away from this Omicron thing. <clears throat> Afghan academics despair months after Taliban takeover. <clears throat> the science events to watch for in 2022. Okay, let's talk about this. COVID continues. No, we're not going to talk about Vaccines upgraded. Vaccine developers have set their sights on the next generation of vaccines to protect against the rapidly evolving coronavirus. Next year could see the development of messenger RNA vaccines that are targeted to specific variants. And some public health officials are hoping for an increased role for vaccines using other technologies. Oh, okay. I'm good with that. There's talk about making MNRA vaccines for cancer, which is somebody who had cancer two years ago, I think would be a great idea.
I think that would be awesome. The, MNR, the mRNA vaccine technology is really quite good. Hmm, there's no place to sign this. That's going to be a problem. Well, we'll just have to fix that. Let's see. Big physics bonanza. After a multi-year showdown and extensive shutdown and extensive maintenance work, the Large Hadron Collider is scheduled to restart operations at CERN. Well, that'll give the crazy something to talk about. I'll talk about how CERN's going to destroy the world. I don't know what the crazies would do without science. They would be have a very bored life. I guess they'd blame it all on witches. I guess that's what you do. It's all the witches fault. It's the witch, burner. Burn the witch. This is the bad part with these little brushes. They run out of paint so fast. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, these are all getting closer to being done. I think this would be easier to do. A little bit for the brush. Yeah, this is looking a lot closer to being done. This is a little bit of blue in the dark gray. It's not really a black color. It's a it's a dark Payne's gray that comes in this set. It doesn't take much and it suddenly pops. Be a little bit yellow over here. says there's a viewer out there. Well, join the chat and say hello. I'll have more to talk about if you ask questions or make statements or do something. <clears throat>
Most yellows are fairly opaque, even in watercolor, because of what they're made out of. So you can usually paint stuff and then put the yellow over and it comes out just a lot like oil color. <laughs> I don't want a lot of yellow in the background there. See that? That little bit of yellow changes everything. It makes it a sunny day. And it was a sunny day. It was a long time ago, but it was a sunny day. Hmm. I have to figure out how to do that. I don't know. Maybe I can paint the yellow over the black. I'll have to try that. Here, I think it's time to turn this painting around. I think this will make this much easier. Not really necessary anymore. Because big washes are over. Big washes are way you can get rid of the tape. In there.
This is almost done. It was closed before, but now it's it's a lot closer. There's still some stuff I have to do over here on the windows. I'm not sure about this background. I got I gotta consider that. We're gonna try this. I'm gonna try painting over this in dark gray. The sign is black with yellow letters. Extremely difficult to do in watercolor. I don't even remember what it said. Well, to hell with it. Maybe we'll take it out of there. Uh, maybe I'll be able to read it when I turn it back over. I'm going to put down the gray. And then we'll go back and touch that up after it dries. HSB, Hart Small Sperbomb, Hart's Narrow Gauge Railroad. All right, now we'll let that dry. Let all of that dry. We'll bring this back around. Somewhere around here, I have a very, very tricky device for fixing this problem. Ah, right here. <coughs> this is how we fix the problem with no signature block. Put it right there. And draw out the signature block. Then we have a signature block. Now, we use our magic weapon. Tempera a la oof. Egg tempera from Sennelier. They're real stuff, man. This is the key to fixing anything right here. It works with watercolors, it works with oils, it works with tempera, it works. Generally speaking, it works all the time. What we do is get a little bit of this white tempera out. Tempera is opaque, it dries quickly, and when you're done with it, you can. it's hard as a rock, and you can paint anything you want over it including watercolor because it's that cool now we're doing this i need a little bit of water what is this water that's weird that's egg that's stuff to drink you don't want to do that mm, just a minute
I have a practically endless supply of PP containers. This particular one that I'm using here. That came from the avocado dip, the guacamole that I like to eat here in Germany. Yes. Yes, we have guacamole in Germany. Shocking as that may be, we do have. So this will probably take two coats of temper. So yes, officially this is now a mixed media painting. It is no longer watercolor. I do not care. People did not become pedantic about this stuff until the 20th century. Then it can, ooh, we can only work in watercolor, ooh. But it must look watery because it's watercolor. No, it doesn't have to look watery because it's watercolor. Go look at William Malley Turner's watercolors of Peter Van, Peter Van Eyck. They're every bit as detailed as the most detailed oil, detailed oil painting you've ever seen. Oh, but we cannot try to paint like that. They were the great masters, and we should never dare to imitate them. Hmm. Weird. Weird concept. One that I do not understand. I do not like pretentious people in any subject area it does not matter if it's art or science or engineering if you are pretentious i don't care i'm with you Okay, now we just let that dry. Then we put on a second coat and it'll be perfect. And in fact, we need to fix this painting here too. Ta da! Put that down. Put it right there. Normally, I just draw this stuff out when I'm doing the painting. But there are many times that I just simply forget to do it. I'm like, we'll have to do it on this one, too. We'll do all three of these at once. <sighs> we have it out, so why not? We take this and just go over it. Remember, boys and girls, egg tempera will solve all your painting problems. Sennelier makes a very good out of the tube product. I would actually like to try painting with just tempera. 
and familiar. Maybe at some point I'll get a chance to do that. I've been told, I have read, that many of the oil paintings that hang in galleries are actually mostly tempera and then with a coat of oil usually on top. And that in order to get things done faster, they used a lot of tempera paint to do the base layers and then use the oil on top to give it that glaze. There's a guy somewhere on YouTube that does a copy of Turner's most famous painting. He does a really good job of it. It's quite a good copy. And that's how he explains what's going on. And he says that, that in many cases, they would do things in tempera to fix problems in oil because it was a rapid and fast way to fix things up. He's actually an art historian who also paints. And I have a really cool book, How to Paint Your Own Vermeer, which basically lays out all the traditional painting techniques, which should be taught in art school and too often are not. One places where art schools went wrong was not training people to paint traditionally. I have nothing against modern art. If you want to do modern art, that's great. Occasionally, I do abstract and surrealistic stuff as well. But this idea that you should just, oh, well, you should just get in touch with your emotions. Yes, and, and paint what you feel. No. Everyone should learn how to draw a human face and a human body so it looks like a human being and not like some kind of like weird alien from the planet Zoltan. Everyone should learn perspective. Really, this should be everyone. This shouldn't just be artists. This should just be everybody. It's just like you learn to speak English or you learn mathematics, at least basic algebra. You say, oh, well, I'll never use that again. Well, maybe you won't, but you might. Okay. Now, we let all that dry. That is the secret. It must dry completely before the next coat goes on. Oh, and I found another one. This will also need work. See, I've been terrible lately. I've forgotten my own plan. You know what? I need to drink. I'll be right back. I just need to drink what? Just a sec. This will fit very nicely right there. So, yeah, where was I? What was I ranting about? Ah, traditional art training. I do believe in traditional art training. Really, that's something... How to draw... The proportions of a human face... The proportions of a human body. Basic one, two, and three point perspective. Even just one and two point perspective. And then a little bit of advanced perspective. So you can really be a good thing. 
The reason being is that it would make everybody competent enough to communicate their ideas visually much better than they do. I'm not saying everybody has to be an artist. You don't have to learn how to be an artist to do what I'm talking about. Not at all. You just need some basic competency and training, and it has nothing to do whatsoever with them. That is the fundamental mistake that people make about all of this. It, talent, as, as Albert Einstein once said, is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. And no true statement has ever been said. If you sit down and do the work, the talent will follow. People say, I have a talent for languages because I speak fluent German with a few, few mistakes in the grammar here and there due to case ending. And some odd phrasal words and things because I wasn't born here and I think a little bit differently because I'm not a born German an ethnic German, but not born here. I also speak reasonably okay Dutch. Basic functional Russian. I can get by in French, or I could years ago. And I actually learned French in many ways before I learned English. When I was in the Army, I spoke reasonably fluent Spanish in Central America. I don't speak it anymore because there's no need to. And I'm in the process of learning Czech, which is challenging because it's a language with seven case endings and grammar that looks a lot like Russian, but except from before the Soviet revisions. There. See? That's where we're going to put the signature block. Ta-da! Say, so, oh, you're so good at learning languages. Well, you know why? Because I've done it a lot. I learned French when I was four years old in kindergarten. I started learning German even earlier than that. When my great-grandfather, Paul Stiebler, came to visit, and wir hatten unsere geheime Sprache, this hidden language that was German, because he didn't speak any English. And he didn't speak it when my parents were around because they didn't want me learning German. They were idiots. This stuff, by the way, dries really fast. Especially in the wintertime when it's reasonably dry. Ten minutes, and you can put a second coat on. So, people are like, how can you learn these languages so quickly? Well, I know the basic structures. I know all the basic grammatic formats. I know what words are important in any language, for me, because I've done it a lot of times. I know what words are a waste of time. I know the process. I know the parts that are a real bummer, like the fact that you just have to memorize a lot of words to begin with. And yeah, that sucks. Sorry. That's what you do. Nobody cares how you feel about it. You just do it. And it's done. They say the first language is easy, the second language is hard, the third language is the hardest, and then after that everything gets 50% easier every time you learn a new language. There is some truth to that. But the key is, is that you got to do it. I met a guy over in Prague, American, who's lived there for 10 years. Doesn't speak Czech. I, I honestly don't know even how to react to that. How you can live somewhere for 10 years and not speak the local language is not something that I can really comprehend. That just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. 
don't understand it. I don't understand anything like that. that that's just weird. I couldn't imagine living somewhere for more for a year and not speaking the language at a basic level for 10 years. My God. And all the friends that I hang out with here on Friday and Saturday night, they're all German. A lot of them are artists. They never learned to speak English because it was never important. Some do speak English. Some of them speak very good English. But many do not. Friend Gavinan, who's a follower here, he lived in Germany for a while. No, he did not learn to speak absolutely perfect fluent German. He was busy doing a doctorate degree. But he managed to pick it up well enough that he can have a meaningful conversation in German. Now talk to him. And he did that very rapidly. He did that in a year. I met a guy here who was a British soldier. And found a German girlfriend. And then they decided they wanted to get married. And the girl's father said, do you speak German? He said, no. He said, you're not marrying my daughter until you speak our language. And we have a program. You will come to dinner with us every night. And you will speak German from day one. We will teach you German. And they did. And he spoke perfectly good German after a year. And he got married. And he lived happily ever after. So, no, I, I don't understand that. But again, it's not talent. Talent has nothing to do with it. It's like learning anything else. You need to sit down and do the schoolwork, and then it will be much easier. And yeah, anybody can learn to do the basics. You might not be Rembrandt, but you should be good enough to do the basics. Yeah, if you don't have imagination, okay, then doing a painting like this, if you have no imagination, yeah, it, it's going to be tough. I don't believe that people don't have any imagination, but a lot of people believe that of themselves. But being able to draw an accurate representation of something that's got nothing to do with talent. I know, I know engineers who do perfectly good engineering drawings who would tell you, I'm the farthest thing from an artist that will ever exist.
that ability to do that should be right up there. It should be every bit as important as learning algebra or correct grammar of whatever language you speak as your primary language. We're learning the basics of science. Even if you're not going to be a scientist, you need to understand how it works. The basic concept. If you want to live in a democracy with freedom, you need an educated population. Like you should know the difference between DNA and RNA. Then when the pandemic hits, you'll have a better idea of how viruses work. got involved in doing this little details here while I'm waiting for that stuff to dry. So now we're on to a new project. And I could do this with black ink. That is an idea. Yeah, everybody should know those basics. And yeah, the thing I hate worse is listening to some idiot tell me, no, I can't do that. And he hasn't even tried. I used to have English students here like that. But they never had a good teacher. They were told they were no good. And they came to my class, and six to nine months later, they were speaking reasonably fluent English. And writing it. And spelling it. And using the correct grammar.
it does require a trained teacher who does know something about how to do whatever it is you're learning and how to communicate it. And if you have a narcissist as a teacher, you should get rid of them with extreme prejudice. Because they will never be any good as a teacher. You know, I get into this detail work, and I just forget about reality. And we're almost there. This will be the first painting I've finished in about six months. That is good. I took a little pause for a while. I was kind of burned out. And I also needed to really focus on my job. Now I need to... I'm burned out from the job. I need to do some of this to bring my brain back together. See, now that's looking almost like a finished painting. There's still some detail work to do. But that's pretty close to a finished painting. And I think we could probably sit down and figure out how long that took. And I think you're looking at around five or six hours. From beginning to end. From drawing to when this thing is finished. somebody's tail hanging out of there. Go back and use what that's the new year. Oui. C'est un très bon.
You can also do this with Chinese white. But I just find that this, 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 this tempera is just like the cure-all for anything. Oh, I need to pick something? Tempera. Temper was more common. Temper was the way to paint before oil color. And actually, if you go to old galleries and you look at paintings from before about 1300, 1400, they were mostly tempera. And they're pretty cool. You might let them dry for a day, put final coat down. That might be the way to do it. Okay, do this one, 16, 11, I'm probably ready for another break. That will be good enough for back. Then we can do the cartoon. Okay. Well, we'll have to come back and finish this up here. This is almost done. This is pretty close. I admit I do use my shorts as a painting rack. Criticize me if you like, but all the greats did it this way. Besides, it's watercolor. It all comes out in the wash. I'll tell you what, it's break time again. We might be back for a third round today, I'm not sure, but we might not. We'll see. Um, There will be no stream on Tuesday night. Uh, yeah. There we go. That's better. There will be no stream on Tuesday. I will probably be off in Oxford. Wednesday will probably be a stream. We'll probably have one on Wednesday. Okay, so take care.